What's going on, old school scares? Welcome back to the channel. Want to take a couple of minutes and talk about the Friday the 13th franchise. Um, if you're like me, you've been waiting for a new um, theatrical Friday the 13th since the remake came out over a decade ago. And unfortunately, we've been stuck in this kind of copyright hell with the franchise. The good news is in 2018, uh, Victor Miller won the uh, copyright lawsuit that he had going on and won the rights to the domestic ownership of Friday the 13th. Now, it was appealed by Sean Cunningham, and the appellate court recently held up that uh, Miller's decision was correct and he does own the rights. So I'm hoping that we'll see uh, a new movie come out in the franchise in the future, very soon in the theaters. Um, that's the goal, right? We want to see another theatrical movie. Uh, I didn't hate the remake. I know a lot of people didn't like it. I thought it was pretty good. I thought Fast Jason was pretty scary. But here's the cool thing, and God bless the horror fans and the horror community, right? Because we have some amazing fan films that came out, and there are three on YouTube, well, three slash four I want to talk about. Two of them kind of tie together. Uh, the one is one of the newest ones I just watched. I just really watched it today, and I finished it. And it was uh, Friday the 13th, Rose Blood, and it was a continuation of Part 7, so the, you know, the Tina Shepard story. Um, so the New Blood story with kind of the, the, lack of a better term, Carrie versus Jason. Uh, there was another one that came out uh, you know, just a few months ago, Jason Rising. Um, which was a pretty cool movie. Again, about an hour long. Roseblood was over an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, and then you had kind of the Never Hike Alone, Never Hike in Snow that came out, you know, four years ago and then about a year ago for those two that were two great movies that were made together. So I just want to take a minute uh, to kind of walk through each one of them and tell you why you should absolutely watch these movies, the good and the bad, right, uh, on all the movies. So uh, because I just watched Roseblood, it's the one that's most top of mind for me. I'm going to kind of go into that one. And talk about the good and the bad. Um, you know, it takes place, you know, really roughly about a year. Or most of it takes place roughly about a year after the first movie. And I'll try not to have a ton of spoilers in these reviews. Um, but again, if you, if you want to see this cold and not have any spoilers go in, you know, please don't watch this video. Watch the movies first. I recommend you watch them anyway. Kudos to these folks that made these movies. They made legitimate movies uh, with very little budget with a ton of passion and a ton of ingenuity. So awesome work to these guys and girls that put this stuff together. But Roseblood's, kind of, again, it's a continuation of Tina's story. Um, it starts off with, uh, you know, Bad News Cruise and Tina in the present day, although, you know, Bad News Cruise is dead. Um, so, you know, he's, uh, you know, a figment of Tina's imagination. But they did bring back Lar Park Lincoln. They brought back Terry Kaiser. Um, you know, so it's very cool to see those guys and girls in the movies today. Um, and it's an interesting story, right? The interesting thing with the movie is it's there is a lot of story. There's a lot of uh, a lot of information going into kind of the Crystal Lake Research Facility, and kudos to them, right? Uh, you know, they had it, they and later it was named a Hotter Mental Facility. Um, you know, and you know, celebration of Kane, which is awesome. Um, there's a, a couple of really cool Easter eggs throughout. They do bring back the Creighton Duke character from Part Nine, the new um, you know um, uh, you know Jason goes to hell, right? So. Pretty cool there. Um, some really cool stuff in the movie. So the first thing I would hit on is I think the movie was interesting, right? I think it was actually filmed well. I think there was actually some really cool shots in there. Uh, you know, there was definitely some neat cinematography. The gore was okay. Again, hit or miss. So again, with a low-budget movie, you don't expect a ton. But there was some actually pretty good gore in there. Uh, some of the acting was really, really bad. Um, and which is a shame because the young lady who played the young Tina, I think, did actually a pretty nice job as well as the main doctor in the facility trying to, you know, help her. Uh, but the military people were really over the top. Um, and, you know, and again, just as you're looking at it, and again, I know it's a passion project, but there's a lot of stuff that took us, uh, you know, took me out of the movie. Uh, some of just even the, the facial hair and tattoos that are clearly, clearly 2019 or 2020, um, supposed to be 1989. Uh, but there was some neat throwback, throwback stuff in there. And again, I thought overall it was a pretty well-made movie. I thought the Jason makeup was pretty cool. It was very true to the, um, very true to the, to the make makeup from, you know, the, uh, the new blood originally. So that was kind of neat. And I thought they did a nice job. I thought the story was pretty good. Um, you know, again, like I said, you didn't see Jason until over an hour into the movie. I think it was an hour and four minutes when we actually saw Jason, uh, in the movie. But that last 20 minutes or so was pretty action-packed and, and a lot of fun and, uh, reminded me a little bit of uh, Jason X where, you know, Jason's fighting the Space Marines and he kind of goes through them uh, and just starts wiping people out. There's some really good good gore. There's a couple of neat scenes, uh, you know, Tina and then the new girl Rose, who's a more powerful version of Tina. Uh, the military, again, kind of like, you know, part nine, 
uh, I'm sorry, a part, uh, you know, Jason X at the beginning where they're trying to, you know, resurrect Jason and keep him in this training facility or, or um, research facility to find out why he can regenerate. And this is a lot of what happens in this movie as well. So uh, I'm going to give Rose, uh, Rose Blood, uh, the continuation story, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I think it was fun. I think it's worth your hour and 20 minutes. Again, not great acting, some, some questionable effects, but there are a couple of really standout scenes. Like I said, the young lady who played Tina was great, uh, young Tina. Uh, getting to see, you know, the original Tina and Nick from the original movie back in the movie was was pretty cool again too. Kudos to these actors that are going back in these fan fan films and actually shooting some stuff in there. Uh, so well done there. Um, you know, like I said, some decent gore. Uh, just an overall fun movie, one I enjoyed quite a bit. So I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is that Jason Rising, which came out like six months ago. Um, and this was a pretty neat movie too. It, uh, you know, again, some of the history, you know, going back into this one goes all the way back to like the original Friday movie. It's just under an hour, uh, as I'm looking at. I just want to make sure I'm giving you the right time on it here. I have it here on my screen. I want to say it's um, just about an hour long. Yeah, 57 minutes. Um, so again, a well done movie. A lot of fun. Uh, again, the Jason mythology, you know, with the local law enforcement and the town trying to move on from what Jason was. This is a more straightforward Jason movie. Um, you know, you've got the police officers, you've got a couple of uh, escaped convicts, and then you've got the the corrections folks looking for those escaped convicts. Um, you know, and this just takes place in the woods. It's definitely more of a traditional Friday movie, uh, and I think it's good for it. Again, decent gore effects, questionable acting. Um, you know, it's a fun movie again. I would tell you out of, uh, you know, out of these, you know, this is very similar to Roseblood. They're just both fun, well-made movies. We can tell the people were passionate around what they were doing. Decent Jason in the movie. Uh, some decent kills. Uh, pretty compelling story towards the end with the female deputy, uh, you know, her and her partner trying to uh, stay alive, realizing the sheriff was right all along but what was going on with Jason. And there's some stuff where they're moving the body around at the beginning. And uh, it's just an interesting take on the Jason mythology. And this one's pretty cool at the end because you get two of the best final girls from the series, uh, you know, making an appearance, right? Uh, you get Jenny Field uh, very briefly in a phone conversation, but you get Adrian King coming back as Alice at the end, uh, coming to save the day and actually fighting Jason, which is awesome to see. And she's she's great and it, um, very tongue in cheek, uh, very well done. I thought just a really cool movie uh, and very very well done. It was a lot of fun. Now the last series we're going to talk about is going to be Never Hike Alone and Never Hike in the Snow, uh, which were kind of the two best of the fan, fan films. You know, when Never Hike Alone came out uh, like four years ago, it's about less than an hour long. It's about a survivalist, uh, and it has been covered on Dead Meat, which was kind of cool, uh, but it's about a survivalist out in the woods who comes across Crystal Lake. And what I thought was really cool about this movie, they did a couple of things really well. Not a ton of death scenes in the movie. There's actually not a ton of gore. It's more of a cat and mouse uh, type movie. Um, but it really goes back to some really cool stuff, uh, tying it into the original movie, into the Charmy, Tommy Jarvis trilogy, right? And we do get Tom Matthews back as Tommy Jarvis in this movie, uh, which is awesome. Um, so that was really cool to see as well. So really enjoyed what we had in this movie. Um, and again, our main character is just a survivalist, runs into Jason, comes into Crystal Lake, and the way they shot it was he comes across all the original crime scenes. Uh, from the movie. So all the original murder scenes from that is what he's a discovering at Crystal Lake, which is kind of an awesome setup. Uh, he gets chased by Jason. There's some really good back and forth. Uh, you know, this is kind of this ghost Jason who's got these monstrous footsteps, really cool looking special effects. Uh, this was well done. Uh, cinematography wise, this is probably the best of the series out of these fan films. Probably the best acting as well. Um, you've just got really good characters in here. Uh, they brought back the sleazy Axel character, our, our version of a sleazy Axel character in one of the ambulance drivers, which is kind of neat. Um, and then, you know, you have, um, you know, just basically Tom Matthews comes in at the end to save the day. So never hike alone. Uh, there's only like two deaths in the movie. It's not super graphic. You don't see a ton of blood. There is one fake death scene that's awesome with this crushed head that looks amazing. Um, but again, overall, just a really good, fun movie that carries on the mythology. And then you get Never Hike in the Snow, which is only like 20 minutes long, but Never Hike in the Snow is awesome. And it's Jason in the winter. It's just this young kid who's moved into the Crystal Lake area, uh, goes to take pictures, takes a picture of Jason, and gets stalked by Jason. Uh, great death scenes in this movie. You have the deputy from the original movie. You have Tom Matthews again coming back as Tommy Jarvis. Um, so those two characters are in the movie. Uh, and then you have one of the, his new deputies. That, so the previous deputy is now like the sheriff. 
You have his deputy uh, and a really cool death scene at the end too, which kind of leads in hopefully to another movie in this series because he did a great job. So I'm going to give um, Jason Rises probably a 5 out of 10. I don't think it was quite as good as Rose Blood. Um, I thought it was good and I, I love the Alice piece, but I, th I would say 5 out of 10. Never Hike Alone. I would give like a seven, I'm going to say a seven out of 10. It's awesome. It's just a little slow paced and then never hike in the snow for 20 minutes. I'm going to give that a nine out of 10. A great movie. Awesome kills. Super fast paced. Continues the mythology. A ton of fun. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to watch these movies, they're all available for free on YouTube. Please go watch them. Do me a favor. Watch the ads for these folks too. Give them the money, you know, the income for doing this. They did an awesome job. Their passion comes through. And thank you to all the actors in the series who love these movies, who actually have stayed with, um, you know, wanting to create this content and help support the fan base who love what you guys are, are part of. So that's our review. Uh, as always, stay scary. If you haven't checked out the channel yet, please hit that like and subscribe button and we'll talk to you very soon.